happy Sunday. Hope you have all had a nice week. I am Nikki Lamberti here in Santa Rosa, Sonoma County, California, for those of you that may not know me. And I wanted to come with you, come to you with a couple tips and updates on what's going out here in wine country um, because it's a very interesting time. So what made me decide on today's topic, which is an update on smoke damage and some of the challenges that we are facing in wine country is that I did a post, many of you saw here on Facebook um, yesterday about um, doing a test in the kitchen on some fermentation um, to determine how bad the smoke damage on the grapes might be. And I was really um, uh, impressed with all of your comments and your, your questions that you had, and it sounds like people are interested about this topic. So I said, well, there's a topic for Sip with Nikki for Sunday night. So um, many of you may know that Michael and I are launching our wine brand, and no, I'm not sharing the name today, but it's coming soon, I promise. Um, oh, hi, mom's watching. Hi, Kim Keller's watching. Um, so not sharing about um, our wine just yet. However, we have a full barrel of um, Sangiovese from 2019 that we'll be bottling next year. And then we just pressed and barreled two barrels of Sangiovese for 2020. But our plan was to make even more wine this fall, expanding into Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc, which are two awesome grapes that we have. Those are my dogs, which can also be blended with Sangiovese for a super Tuscan type of wine. So um, we were hoping to be picking those grapes this week from a vineyard that we have been working with. But as many of you know, there's been such bad smoke and fires in the area. We are not in any immediate danger right now, by the way, we are okay. Um, but it affects the grapes. So it's a really challenging year and, and you know, our project is very teeny tiny. Uh, we're doing just a couple tons, but when you think about so many wineries out here that it's their entire livelihood, that they just may not be able to make wine this year, um, it's really heartbreaking. So, heartbreaking. so it's, um, it's difficult because it's a big unknown, right? So there's a lot of chemistry in wine. I actually brought down my wine science chemistry textbook that I used as I was going through my winemaking certificate at UC Davis, there is a lot of chemistry in wine, and that is why the smoke is such a big problem. Um, the fact that we had so much smoke um, for so many weeks, like we had 28 days of poor air quality here where you could literally see the smoke, that potentially causes an issue because it causes, one of the big things is a chemical compound called guayacol that becomes present in the grapes and in high levels, it taints the wine. And generally speaking, your wine smells bad, tastes bad, can have a bad bitter finish. Um, and there is a lab test that you can do for it, but the labs are so backed up here. I mean, worse than COVID testing, you know, you submit it and it's like six weeks out, you might get the results. It's, it's a very time consuming lab process and it's time to start picking the grapes. So we gotta decide what to do. So I'm taking the cue from uh, some more experienced people in this arena who said, just take a sample of the grapes, which I did on Friday, and do some miniature fermentation. I mean, this is like in a cooking bowl. Um, this is Cabernet Sauvignon, and then this is its parent grape, Cabernet Franc which we have started fermentation uh, here in the kitchen. And the whole point is just to be smelling and tasting it every step of the way um, to see if we start to notice anything off about it so we can then determine if we're gonna move forward. So yeah, we got fermentation going on in the kitchen. So um, I thought you guys might wanna see what happens. And you know, if you've followed some of my other um, videos that I've done at the winery, you know, you can do it on a very uh, a large scale in a big bin and you could also do it in, <laughs> in a teeny tiny scale and do the punch down on the grapes. Um, and the reason that we punch it down like this, whether it's in the winery or in the kitchen with, by the way, this is an avocado masher that we use to make guacamole. Um, the reason you do this is with red wines, which this obviously is, you keep the skins and the seeds in there while fermentation is happening. Fermentation just means yeast are eating all the sugar and turning it into alcohol, yay. And um, this is where you're deriving all of the color from the skins of the grape and also tannin. And you guys have heard me talk about tannin before. 
Tannin has a lot of myths. Uh, people are very confused about tannin. Tannin is basically just a natural compound that exists in the skins and the seeds, which you see in here. If the wine is aged in an oak barrel, you can get some tannin from that too. But that's what causes like bitter, chalky astringency in the wine is, is tannin. Now, if it's in a good amount, it's interesting and it's pleasing and it adds what we call structure, like the picture frame to the wine. And some grapes like Cabernet Sauvignon and Cabernet Franc are known for having a higher amount of tannin, right? So if you don't like that about wine, you either age it and it'll soften the tannin or you drink different types of wines. Different grapes have different amounts of tannin, especially depending on where they may have been grown. So if that's of interest to you, um, Michael's gonna put in the comments here, he's gonna paste a link in the comments below that is to my new wine tips cheat sheet that I have made available for everybody. And there's actually a section on there with tips about tannin. So if you wanna learn a little bit more about that, you can download that, it's like a single sheeter PDF. Um, and then that'll also get you signed up for my newsletter where each week I'm gonna start sharing tips like this via email as well. When I do go live, I will actually, in the email newsletter, put the link in there in case you missed the video during the week. It'll link it back so you can watch it um, after the fact. So yeah, that's just a little bit about tannin. But you know, the main reason when we worry about smoke and ash being on the grapes that we can't wash them off is chemistry, again, because we don't normally wash grapes when we pick them and crush them and start the process because introducing water at that point is not good. It dilutes the sugars, it dilutes the flavors, it just throws everything off. That's not what we wanna do. Um, my friend Melissa, hey Missy Walnock, she commented in my post about the grapes, can't you just use air to blow off the smoke and the ash? Well, you could, and that's a great thought, Missy. However, um, it's more about chemistry and not just having unwanted substance like dust or ash on the grape skins, there are little chemical um, reactions that are happening due to the smoke and the, the guayacol and some of these compounds that you don't want in the wine, they're getting literally bound up within the grape. So washing them off or air drying them off is not gonna help. That's also why it's important to do this sort of preliminary fermentation on a small scale because once it starts going through fermentation and the skins and the seeds are breaking down and the juice is absorbing all of that, the belief is that at this point, this is where you can start to smell and taste and feel some of those off characters that might exist. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna check this out. Um, we're gonna watch this for the next couple days and see how it comes out. Um, and then we'll have to make a decision if we're gonna move forward with the rest of the harvest or if we're just gonna stop where we're at. So uh, that's what's going on in our kitchen is a little bit of winemaking on a small scale. Last but certainly not least, because I love to end each one of these with a little sip with you, um, I wanted to share with you guys an awesome wine that I'm enjoying tonight. You may have heard um, last weekend, I did a beautiful tasting in Yachtville here in the Napa Valley in a beautiful uh, winery called Handwritten. This is not a sponsorship or anything like that. I'm assuming it's okay to talk about it, but I love the wine and I just think it's amazing. And this is actually a red blend that we purchased. And um, this is what we're gonna be sipping tonight here on Scarlet Place. And uh, Michael's got a pork shoulder on the Traeger. We're gonna have some pulled pork with this beautiful red blend from Handwritten. So. Um, thanks for watching. I, I didn't realize that this topic was so interesting to everyone until I started getting all the questions. So just wanted to shed a little bit of light on why it's so stressful here and there are so many unknowns because as much chemistry as there is, there's still an unpredictability factor. So the whole area is kind of in a wait and see um, as we wait to see what mother nature gives us yet again at the whim of mother nature. So. Thanks for watching everyone. Again, check out the comments if you haven't uh, downloaded my Nikki's top tips for understanding and enjoying wine yet. Um, the link is in the comments. Thank you to those of you who have and uh, stay tuned on more tips and newsletter coming your way. Cheers everybody. Sleep well, be well.